What's up guys, Tim Little, Matt Allen. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin and welcome back to the Buyer's Guides. We took a little bit of a break, but today, diving back into the Buyer's Guides, today we are talking jigs, trailers, and fishing rods. Let's go. Jig fishing is one of our absolute favorite ways to catch a bass. There are so many different ways that you can fish a jig. You could throw a swim jig, you can heavy flip, you can work around docks, you can fish ultra deep water, you could do it with a spinning rod, a casting rod. There are so many ways to do it, but as a result, it is a giant category. So today we're narrowing it down. It's a handful of bait. So if you've got a clear water fishery, if you fish a lot of light line, listen to the finesse stuff. If you like to get right up on the bank, throw a spinner bait, a chatter bait, listen to the swim jig stuff and everybody else somewhere in between. Let's jump right into it. Let's start with swim jigs. We're going to keep this really simple. We've got two for you. This is Dirty Jigs standard swim jig. Heavy wire hook, really good skirt, really good colors. And we pair them up with some very specific swim baits. Tim will get into trailers here in a minute, so I won't delve into it, but the trailers are very specific with any swim jig to get the right action. You see a lot of guys, when they throw swim jigs, they're shaking that rod tip to get the action. You don't have to do that. If you pair up the right trailers, the swim jigs themselves create a ton of vibration, a ton of action, and you can just chuck and wind just like it's a spinnerbait or a chatterbait. So that's why choosing the right options is so important. So the first one is that standard dirty jigs swim jig. Keep it simple. We'll link you probably three colors for every single one of these jigs. You can look at those, pick a favorite, but that's a really good way to go because we'll give you our absolute favorites, the ones that we rely on as we travel around the country. Uh, so that's that guy. The other one is one that is very near and dear to my heart. This is the California Swim Jig. This is a bait that Kurt from Dirty Jigs and I paired up, what, 15 years ago or something ago. to design. I mean, we were kids. Uh, the California Swim Jig was built because there was a need for a heavy wire swim jig. It literally didn't exist in the whole market. No one made one with a heavy, heavy hook. So we built the California swim jig with a no jack hook and you cannot bend them. I mean, straight 80 pound braid, you can't bend them. Uh, built it in a ton of colors, but it was designed to fish in heavier weights with heavier gear and to bust through cover. So we fish it in heavy grass, fish it in wood and just plow your way through that stuff. It's just a four by four of a swim jig put it up shallow and just beat your way through everything. And when a big one eats it, it doesn't matter if she's behind a tree, in the grass, you just start pulling until that fish comes out. Yeah, and those of you guys that don't know the benefit of a swim jig, and, and we've done in-depth videos on all this stuff, but you get the secondary action. So instead of throwing a swim bait, now you're getting that cur that that uh, skirt pulsing with the rod twitches, you're getting that, that kind of the scale flickering and stuff. And like Matt said, you can throw this right through uh, reeds, toolies, cats, whatever you want to throw. And I don't know how many double digits we've caught on that guy <laughs> right there, but a lot. A lot. And a lot of time, when night fishing, straight braid, and like you said, just no, no, that no jack does not bend out. So keeping uh, on pattern with heavy, I'm gonna talk about the no jack flipping jig. Now again, this is a product by Dirty Jigs Tackle and uh, comes in all sorts of great colors, but we will link our favorites down below in the video description. But this is a jig, when you're getting up shallow, you're flipping around docks, you're flipping around heavy color, heavy cover, you know, you're real, tongue tied today gonna use real <laughs> heavy line straight bait straight braid and just really get those big fish out of that heavy cover you you got to go with that no jack hook the same hook exactly. that's in that swim jig and you won't bend a hook out getting those big ones out of that heavy cover nice now from there we know that not everybody is fishing 65 pound right. braid is flipping heavy cover is looking for a 12 pound large mouth so let's transition to the middle of the road and then we'll go to finesse and, and then we'll go to that like micro stuff. In the middle, that's where most people are. 
for me, there's there's one jig that I turn to day in and day out, especially if I'm on largemouth fisheries. If I could only have one, it's a pitching jig. Again, all these different baits will be linked in the video description like every buyer's guide. So don't try and keep track right. of this stuff. We'll break it down for you in the description with favorite trailers, favorite colors, all that stuff. But the pitching jig is an arky style head. So it's a rounded style head that will come through just about anything. Now, it's not the best for coming through grass. It's not the best for fishing on a mud bottom, but it will do everything. That's what I like about it. It's one jig. It's got a stout hook. It's not a no jack hook, but it's a stout hook. It'll handle a big fish. I can fish it on 15 to 20 pound line very comfortably, but that's a jig that I know if I'm going to a new lake, if I'm going out and I'm going to be fishing different scenarios, maybe I'm going to go try and fish some grass. Maybe I'm going to try and fish some bluff walls. I've just got one jig tied on and I just go and don't worry about it. Along those same lines, this is the compact pitch and jig. And I don't know how well you guys can see it, but if you can see the size of the hook, it's a much smaller hook. I've played more and more and more with this over the last couple of years. The compact pitch and jig is what I turn to if the water gets a little clearer. It's that same head style, so it'll come through everything. But I can do a couple of things. One, I can throw more chunk style baits because the hook itself is shorter. So if you like throwing a chunk as opposed to a full creature or a full craw, you can do that. But most important is that it's a little bit lighter wire. So you can drop down to 10 or 12 pound line, still set that hook. If you're a guy that doesn't like to power those hook sets, you know, Younger guys like to just freight train them just as hard as they can. Older guys, a lot of older guys just don't want to do that. You don't want to hit them that hard. If you drop down to a compact, you're fishing the same profile, you're fishing the same stuff, but you don't have to hit them so hard. So my dad throws the compact pitching jig a lot when we go fishing because he just sort of leans back on those fish and he gets them. And you wouldn't get that out of a full size jig. A lot of those fish would just get a skin hook and they'd come up and throw it. So those are a really good one-two punch, depending on your style and how light a line you're fishing with. Continuing with the finesse stuff, I'm gonna talk about the finesse football. I have two different finesse football jigs. Now, Can I stop you? Yeah. I thought you were going there, no? Is that crazy? I can. I thought we were going from that to that, and then you were going. In my mind, this is lighter than this. This is a shaky head, and this is a jig, right? Okay. Okay, sorry, I did not mean to interrupt you. Yeah, because it's going to transition you into that. Oh. Right? Well. Finesse, and then. Except you're going to go, and then I have to go here. But then it makes no sense that I go here. How'd that happen? I don't know, you did it. You go all three. Okay. Okay, sorry. All right, sticking with the finesse jigs, I'm going to talk about three different jigs for you. I got two different football finesse football heads and then an actual finesse jig. Let's talk about the finesse footballs because these back home California Clearwater Reservoirs, like Matt talked about, 10, 12, 14 pound line. You're using lighter line. You're not doing the real heavy hopping a jig. You're not jacking them with 65 pound braid. Right. You're actually fishing these on a, a lighter jig rod. You're fishing lighter, lighter fluorocarbon. Mm -hmm. uh, two different finesse footballs. I'll talk about this guy right here first. This is the Dirty Jigs finesse football. Again, tons and tons of colors. I like to pair that up with some kind of uh, Yamamoto uh, trailer. I'll, I'll talk about trailers in just a little bit, a little twin tail, twin tail grub. But uh, where I fish these, like, like Matt talked about, clear water and I'm downsizing. I'm gonna go with lighter line and you're just trying to get a bigger bite than you would if you were throwing a worm. With that said, this guy right here, so this is your typical silicone skirt. This guy right here is a Bass Patrol jig, and it's got a living rubber skirt. Those of you guys that aren't familiar with living rubber, it's got a lot more action in the water. It kind of puffs up a lot more, a lot more action when you're not doing, not, when you're not giving the jig any action. So if you want something that moves a lot, flares up a lot, uh, a living rubber jig is a good way to go. Again, we'll link those down below in the video description. Again, pair those up with your favorite twin tail grub, and uh, you will catch a lot of fish. Tons and tons of fish <laughs> caught on those finesse footballs. 
And then I actually want to talk about this guy right here. This is actually called a finesse jig. Now, in my mind, where I fish this, you can throw this on a spinning rod, you can throw it on a light bait caster, but you worm fishermen, if you want to target larger fish, so put down the drop shot, put down the shaky head, throw an actual finesse jig, and you will upsize the size of the fish instantly. You will get right. bigger bites with the jig than you will with the worm. Again, I'll, I'll, I'll link our, our favorite trailers down below in the video description. Yeah, that little finesse jig is just like a do everything, right? You just replace your worm and just go dock fishing, fishing anything. It doesn't even matter. Right. Anywhere you throw a shaky head, uh, try throwing that guy. So last up, micro jigs. Okay, and I've got two of them. They're both footballs. The micro jigs have really come into play for us, what, maybe the last three years? Something like that? We started fishing more and more clear water fisheries. And we started out throwing them for smallmouth. Right. But they work so well for everything. In my mind, you've got like lowland fisheries, right? Those lowland reservoirs, big, large mouth, you're going one direction. You get those highland reservoirs, that clear water, small mouth, spotted bass, smaller, large mouth. You've got to go that other way. You've got to finesse it. Tim talked about even dropping down to a spinning rod with a finesse jig. Micro jigs, same deal. We're talking about little tiny hooks. I mean, tiny hooks. You're getting down where you can throw a jig on a spinning rod on six and eight pound line. Six, eight, ten pound, no problem. You can set that hook and get those fish. So both of these jigs are footballs. This is Kitex, little tiny tungsten football jig. And we throw that guy a lot. This one is newer to me. I recently got schooled up by one of our friends. We were out fishing with Coop. Coop was throwing this little guy. This is a Jewel Baits Peewee football. Look how small it is, even compared to a Kitek. See how thin the skirt is? I mean, it is just a little tiny jig. So this is a lead jig. This is tungsten. So lead's a little bit cheaper. It's even a thinner skirt material. Awesome little jigs. We pair these up with little baits. These are both Ned baits that we use as trailers on these things. And again, Tim will get into that. But these little tiny profiles, same thing he just said. If you're out on the lake and you're catching fish, drop shot. If you're catching fish on a Ned rig, let's say you're in a tournament, you've been going all day and you're trying to get your kicker now. Don't keep throwing the same bait. You can switch over to a jig. Jigs just naturally catch a bigger bass. It's just, it's one of those mysteries of bass fishing. There's something about it that just gets a bigger bite even when it's a little tiny jig. So if you're on that clear water fishery, you need a little bit bigger bite, quit throwing the same thing, switch over to a little micro jig, stick to that really light line so you keep getting bit and you can get a much larger bite. What I love about these smaller jigs is you don't give up a lot of the numbers. You can go down the bank and still catch a ton of fish, but if you cross paths with a big, big one, the odds of them eating that little finesse jig versus a plastic worm, it's quite a bit higher. So you're getting two birds with one stone, right? You're still catching a lot of fish, but when you cross paths with a giant, odds are good that that fish is going to pick that bait up. So it's a really neat way to not give up the fun factor and still get that bigger bite. Yeah, two more things about this little guy right here, this, this Kitek. And the reason we really branched out and started throwing these uh, correct me if I'm wrong, two different scenarios. First, ultra clear water, sight fishing, big small mouth. Mm -hmm. When the fish are down 20 plus feet and you're trying to throw a little tiny quarter ounce jig, it takes forever for it to get down there. Right. But this Kitek, because it's tungsten, you can get it in a lot larger or a lot heavier weights without having to go super big on the head. You still get that compact presentation right. so you can get down there a lot quicker. And the second reason was fishing current. Again, that is where it started. Getting that heavier head down on that current, getting that jig down and not having it just wash away. This little guy right here is money because it is tungsten. You pay a little bit more for them, but you get the benefit, the sensitivity of tungsten, and you don't have that giant head on a little tiny profile. So, right. Yeah, you can throw a half ounce head in a little tiny jig and it doesn't look like a half right. ounce head. And you can fish it light line, even though it's heavy. Yep. 
And then same thing with fishing super deep, right? You could right. fish 30, 40, 60 foot in a reservoir and still be able to set the hook on an eight or 10 pound right. line and be good to go. So trailers real quick, again, we're not gonna go super in depth. We have probably five or six different trailers that we use on all these different styles of jigs. You know, it all depends on, on water clarity, how much action you want, uh, water temperature, and colors. So typically we have some kind of creature bait like a beaver, some kind of craw, uh, kind of a craw trailer, and then some kind of like a grub trailer. But down below in the video description for all these, we will link our favorite trailers because mm -hmm. obviously this is gonna take a different trailer than the big exactly. yeah, no we'll jack flipping. Favorites. So we'll link our favorites and to some of our favorite colors, but uh, just know that we have specific uh, trailers for these jigs, especially the swim jigs to get that secondary action without having to do the rod shake. And then, rods? Yeah, last but not least, let's talk rods and then we'll wrap it up. Now we are on the, tail end black friday already went by so across the industry this was a tough year right? right everything got screwed up inventory wise every company ran out of product early in the year so i don't even know how easy it would be for you to get a jig rod right now but take a look because i'm sure some people will be restocking some don't have any inventory at all so take a look but we'll link you our favorites my all around if i just had one jig rod that a Rochi for big jigs. So for throwing California swim jig, a standard swim jig, flipping, pitching jigs. That's that's the limit line right there is that pitching jig. The the Mega Bass Orochi Brailist is an amazing jig rod. You've got a ton of backbone, but it's a long rod, so it'll load deep into the blank. You've got a softer tip so that you can see deflection. As you're pulling through, say, rocks or something like that, you'll see that rod tip moving so you're connected to that bottom and you'll even see on a light bite you'll see it start to load up even before you feel that bite so that's my all-around favorite rod it's been difficult to get though this year all the way through the year it's been tough the one that i like from a pitching jig on down through my finesse jigs g loomis mbrs this is the 844 mbr that rod and you compare it with whatever reel. This is a, a metanium. It's a high-end reel. It's a high-end rod. But the nice thing about the MBRs, that 843 and 844, and for this, I like the 844. You can get that rod. This is a GLX. You can get it in a Conquest. You can get it in a GLX. You can get it in an IMX Pro. So three or $400 worth of swing between the rods right. getting the exact same action but those mbrs are super soft up here in the tip section super soft they deflect extremely well and then they load up so you're able to throw a pitch and jig and hammer a hook set and stick those fish because you flex through the top and you hit backbone but you're able to soften that hook set up on a finesse jig and just load that thing up on them with one rod and then last one a little bit more budget oriented the Zodius, and these have been, um, well, they're brand new. So you've been able to pre-order them. They've, they've come and gone a couple of times really, really quickly, but the seven foot five medium heavy, it has a longer handle section, which I really like. So this is a rod that I've started playing with that'll save a bunch of money and is still a fantastic all around jig rod. It's seven foot five, softer tip, long handle so you can really power hook sets. So far, I've been very impressed with that as more of a mid-range combo that'll save you a couple hundred dollars over some of the others. That's a great option as well. So there it is, guys. You know, the jig fishing category is a giant, giant, giant. category, but here are some of our favorite types of jigs. Again, we'll link some of our favorite trailers, exact some rods colors. and real, yeah, exact colors, but this will simplify your jig buying process this holiday season. If you guys have any questions, please leave those down below in the comment section. We'll try to get to those as, as soon as possible. We're getting hundreds a day messages and comments and stuff. So we'll try to get to those as soon as possible. Uh, bear with us, but uh, hopefully that simplifies it for you. Again, we'll link everything down below in the video description. If you guys learned something from this video or like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to our channel, turn on those notifications, and we'll talk to you soon. See you guys.